What is up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Killer Keemstar, and I'm here with... Only Use Me Blood. This is the Bad Kid Cast, the audio cast that you listen to... While you game. We are available on iTunes, Spreaker, uh, Stitcher, uh, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, and one more other source, but I can't remember right now. <laughs> it's been a minute, man. We've, we're available almost everywhere, except for YouTube, which uh, we're working on fixing that. So, um... So we went to Denver again. The Denver Trip Volume 2. And the last time we went to Denver um, and, and we did a podcast about what happened, you guys loved it. It yeah. was like... We your, called it The Trip and it was epic. So this is The Trip V2. So Dylan, and if you don't know Dylan, Dylan is um, a 16-year-old who flies helicopters and who runs all the Minecraft servers, the big ones in our community. He runs, well, he founded uh, Woodycraft. He created that. He ran uh, OpticCraft and he ran uh, Crewniverse, which is like KYR Speedy's and Friends Minecraft server. So he runs all that stuff. Um, and he has a bunch of websites and the kid is, well rich because of his work so he is the one that is kind of like organizing these trips to denver um and he organized this one and he hit me up and he said hey keem do you want to go i said i will go but blade has to uh come with me good right? looking keem <laughs> so i that's that's the stipulation right and it, the reason why is because these fucking kids are annoying as fuck yeah, um, and also to do a lot of things, i.e. rent a car, rent ATVs, um, hotel rooms, all this stuff, you kind of need an adult for that. So so then we have um, the other people that are going on this trip with us um, is Robert. Now, Robert is from Seattle, and he owns a smaller uh, hosting company, and he also flies helicopters. And his dad works at Microsoft, and he's just uh, another rich little cunt. And he's originally from England. Um, he was born in England, but uh, most of his uh, life he has lived in Seattle. And how old is he? He's, he's uh, And he is 18. 18. He's 18? I thought he was 17. 17 or 18. I'm okay. not sure. All right. Then we have Fat Chris. Oh, boy. Now, Fat Chris owns a really successful um, hosting company, a pretty big one. And uh, to the point where he like flies down to Texas and checks on his servers and stuff like in the building, in house, checks all the equipment, all that stuff. He's 20 years old. He's from Toronto. And his father is a CEO of a gold mining company. Damn. I did not know that. Yeah. You didn't know that? I didn't know that part of him. That's how Chris's basically company got funded. Okay. And then the fourth person that would be joining us on this trip is Alex and Alex owns like some of the biggest Minecraft servers. Uh, I think like Minecraft uh, skins dot com or some shit like all the big Minecraft servers. Um, and he's rich because of it. And he is from England. So these are the people that went on the trip. Me, Blade, and these four rich fucks. So, uh, obviously, like, they paid for everything. You know, it was like, well, you know, Keem, come with us. I go, if Blake can come, and, you know, you pay for everything for us. We'll go. All right? That's the stipulation. Always. So, they book our flights. We go to the airport. And we notice this strange thing. Keemstar is sitting at the window, and Blade is sitting in the middle. Every time. Every time. <laughs> Not only that... But we're going to Denver from New York, right? They set up the flight where we go to fucking Charlotte, which was like a couple hours south, and then all the way across. So it was just, it was bullshit. Uh, see, the thing is, I know that they set it up so that we get into Denver first, so that we can get the rental car and pick them up. Right. But to send us to Charlotte and then to Denver seems ass backwards. It's like, a, it's not a direct line. It's not a little bit of overture. It's just it's like a really roundabout way to get to Denver. Anyhow, <coughs> me and Blade, we get super lucky. And on both flights, there's enough room where Blade could take a different seat. So, I mean, we're big guys, right? So mm -hmm. we didn't have to sit on top of each other. Everything's fine. We get into Denver. We're there. We finally made it. Hours later, it's time to go get the rental car. Yep. Now, we're renting eight TVs, and we're going to ride them in the fucking hills, Right. right? So we need 
a big fucking vehicle to pull this shit, right? Right. And we're going to have six people. Yeah. So I get down to the Alamo to pick up my rental car. And to my surprise... They've fucking booked like this small like Jeep Cherokee shit. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, yeah, this isn't going to work. We need a like a Yukon XL. We yeah, have like s- a Suburban or a Yukon XL or something like that. Like the big boy. So they're like, okay, fine. We can upgrade it. But you need to put down another $311. I'm like, fuck. I'm like, can you just charge it on the card that, that pre-ordered this? No. Had to put it on my card. So I'm like, motherfucker. So I put it on my card, whatever. You know, I figured, you know, I'll just tell them you owe me 300 bucks. They'll pay me. Won't be a big deal. Right. Um, (laughs) We got fucking insurance on this goddamn thing because it's fucking scary as fuck. Right. Yeah. Uh, To rent this thing with these kids that don't give a fuck. Um, So anyhow, I rent it, get the insurance. We go out and now it's time to pick up them as they're flying in. The first person we pick up is Robert. And first thing, Robert gives us the wrong airlines where he's going to be at. So he says Alaska. Now, the Denver airport has two sides of it. It's got a west side and it's got an east side, right? So we're swinging by to pick up Robert. He's not fucking there, all right? (laughs) Then he texts us and he's like, oh, actually, I'm at the American Airlines waiting. I'm like, motherfucker, that's on the other side of the airport. So we have to go all the way around the airport again. And each trip around the airport is like 10 minutes just to fucking do this bullshit. Right. We go all the way around. We pick up Robert. Everything's secure. Then we find out that Dylan and Fat Chris have arrived. We have to go around the airport multiple times waiting for them to actually come out of their stop, which was bullshit. Finally, we pick them up. Now we have Robert, Fat Chris, Dylan, Blade, and Keem in the Suburban or in the Yukon XL. Five deep? Five deep. So the first thing me and Blade want to do is go get weed because weed is legal in Colorado. It's beautiful, man. It really is. But I must say, though, okay, I'm not going to get like the place that we went to uh, when they told me the prices. I was like, are you kidding me? Seventy four dollars an eighth. Yeah. And I like normally eighth's, eighth's normally 40 bucks. Yeah. An eighth a week. It's is been like $40. that forever. Like it's been like that forever. <laughs> but, you know, state of Colorado's got to get their thing. Uh, they act like salesmen there. I believe they probably get a commission. Like it was it was bullshit. I, I seriously, I wanted to make a commentary about this, but I'm like, I probably should make a commentary about fucking weed prices and how the legalization sucks. Here's the thing. I've been smoking since I was 16. I've never gotten in any lawful trouble because of marijuana. Okay. I've never got a possession charge and never got any of that stuff. So it really didn't affect me. I used to smoke all the time. Right. So now with this legalization, now they're taxing the, taxing the fuck out of it. So we get to this place altitude and their prices are fucking stupid, really expensive. And not only that, but the only the biggest problem I have with that place is they have a waiting area. You give them your ID, you go to the waiting area and you got to wait to be called. That shit takes like fucking 20 minutes. Like it's just annoying to wait that long when you're just trying to get weed and get back to your hotel after been traveling all day. Right. Right. Anyhow, me and Blade, we go in, we get our weed. All right. I prefer a sativa. And I'm an indica guy. And he's an indica dude. So I want stuff, weed that's like going to make me feel active and alert and, you know, whatever. Giddy. Giddy is the proper word. Yeah. It's like, you know, you'll, you'll laugh at stuff, but you're also like want to go do stuff, go on adventures. Blade wants the type of weed where he just sits there and does nothing. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what indica is. It's couch weed in the couch. So anyhow, we both get our specialized weed. I got actually golden goat, I believe, gold goat from this uh, altitude place. I don't know. What did you get? I got OG Kush. Blue Dream is my favorite type of weed. Uh, was until I found out this new stuff that we're going to talk about later Um, and uh, some hash berry. So anyhow, we get our weed. We go smoke it. We go back to the hotel. All right. Now, granted, I have my hotel room under my name, but Robert and Dylan are both uh, were under the age of 18. So I needed to sign them in for their rooms or Mm -hmm. whatever. So I do that. We get up to a room room everything's cool pie is fuck i love this new fucking weed that i got yeah that's <laughs> great um and we come up with the idea that we're going to play monopoly mm-hmm. but nobody wants to have people in their room i don't want these kids in my room they don't want me in their room so we found a meeting area downstairs and it's like part of the hotel and it's for like business meetings we go in there right mm-hmm. we're scoping it out it's like a tiny convention room you know right and there's three of them. 
right? And we notice a fridge and we look over there and we feel like we've won the fucking lottery because inside the fridge is at least 30 to 35 Mountain Dews and fucking Waters. Pepsis and Cokes and Diet Cokes and all these drinks that are free. Now, it's not like we can't afford our own drink. Right. But... The whole idea of free anything is just amazing. First off, when you're at 5,000 feet, which is above sea level, you consume a lot more water than you would on like in a normal climate or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. The air is thin. The air is thin. So anyhow, we're high as balls. All right. And we're playing this Monopoly game and nobody can figure out how to play it because it's like some fucking weird Monopoly like... (laughs) Weird. What's the word? Like offset. the version. The version of Mo- of Monopoly was like uh, called Corporations, yeah. and it was just some weird setup, and it didn't work. So then we fucking took off. We got another Monopoly game, mm-hmm. and then Alex lands in right, and they want us to go pick him up. I'm like, dude, I'm high. I've been fucking traveling all day. Fuck this. I'm not going to pick up Alex, right? So they whine and whine and pick up Alex. You got to pick him up. I go, let him just take a fucking Uber. Like the kid's rich. He can just take an Uber. By the way, it's going to take more time because we have to take 45 minutes to the fucking airport. 45 minutes. And also you have to keep in in mind that a a Yukon XL, this big ass fucking beast of a vehicle, uh, the gas for you to drive from from our place to the airport and back would probably be more than the Uber. Ridiculous. So anyhow... Alex ends up Ubering in and, you know, I think we played a little Monopoly or whatever. Uh, not that much shit happens the first night. We go to sleep. All right. Wake up the next morning. All right. Now, the greatest thing about the hotel that we we're staying at, the Hyatt, is that they have free breakfast. And yep. it's a pretty amazing breakfast in the morning. All right. So... It's a situation where you can just like mound food up forever and take as many trips as you want. And it's, I just fucking love that. I love that. Um, So, anyhow, we have a great breakfast. And then me and Blade step outside uh, for a little weed smoke. Because here's the thing you can smoke weed anywhere, it's not illegal. All right. So, we're out there puffing. And all of a sudden, we see this lady come out with a red shirt on and a little white dog. (laughs) <laughs> and this lady is like how old? Like I'd say like mid forties. Mid forties, right? Early forties, mid forties. Yeah. She looks kind of maybe that she's wealthy. I don't know, but yeah. she's walking her little dog around, and the dog just stops walking and it's like staring at Blade with like big puppy eyes. We're like <laughs> I'm like Blade, did you see that? He's like, no, I missed it. I like watch that dog. The dog starts walking again with its owner, then just stops and is like staring at Blade. Yeah, and it's like really creepy, right? <laughs> and as we're looking. Because we're in the front of the hotel, right? And we're looking down the parking lot towards the road where to enter into the hotel. It's like kind of sideways onto our left-hand side. As we're looking (laughs) at this lady, right, walking her dog, right, all of a sudden we see two SUVs pulling in at the same time. Now, in the parking lot, in order to get in front of the hotel, there's two speed bumps, right? These two SUVs are flying up towards this lady with the dog, yeah. and they're jumping off the speed bumps coming in. It was to the point where I thought like it was a car bomb coming yeah. into the ho- like hotel. Like they were going to crash into the hotel. It was crazy. So they fly right into the awning underneath the hotel. You know how hotels have like yeah. these awnings or whatever. So One of them out. was like a BMW SUV, and it had that little whine of a turbo. And this thing was kind of little, pretty souped up. And the other one was like a Jeep Cherokee. Right. So they fly in side by side in a one-way fucking area to drive, <laughs> right? They get underneath, underneath the hotel awning or whatever and slam on the brakes. <laughs> and I just look at Blade, and Blade looks at me at the same time, and we're like, what the fuck? So an ongoing thing on this trip that really sucks, and I have to say this, is that the iPhone um, sucks for battery life. So Keem's like, are you going to take a video of this? And I'm like, uh, my shit's dead. Sorry. And I didn't have my phone on me. It was up in the room. Yeah. So I'm like, shit. So all of a sudden, this guy goes, fuck you, motherfucker. Where'd you learn how to drive? And the other guy's like, fuck you. I'm from here. I'm from here. Some shit like that. So then the first guy um, that started talking shit, the younger guy of the two, right? Uh-huh. He just flies up right next to me and blade yeah like up on the curb where we're standing up on the curb where we're standing and parks his car all right so now these two cars are about 10 
10 feet, 15, well, I'd say about 20 feet away from each other, right? Mm -hmm. This dude parks right next to us to the point where we have to move to see what's going on. He fucking rolls down his window and he goes, I bet you ain't from around here. Yeah, some shit like that. He goes, I could tell you ain't from around here. Yeah. Right? Like they're going to throw down. And the other guy's like, I am from here. I lived here my whole life. So the best part about this is, right, is that it's getting to this point, this boiling point, where I think these guys are going to fight, right? The dude that is in the Jeep gets out right right to the door and is like, fuck you. Then he, you know how with luggage, how you have to pull up the little handle in order to roll it? Yeah. He pulls that out as hard as he can and like walks away with his luggage in his hand into the hotel. Like, what? You're checking in? Like, how do you go to fuck you and then be like, whoop, and then walk in? So then <laughs> the other guy starts following him in there and he's shaking his head and he's pissed as fuck. And now fight is about to break out, right? Yep. Then all of a sudden, nothing happens. It's such a letdown. And then one dude gets in his car and he drives away. But the guy that drove up on the curb, he's still there. At this point, me and Blade are done smoking. We're like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> Let's get up to our room and get a camera in case something else happens, right? Right. So as we're walking to go back up into our hotel room, the one guy that's still up on the curb that's still there walks out and puts his arm around the lady in red with the dog and starts hustling her away. And I'm like, Blade, I think you just fucking kidnapped her. Right. Like this crazy motherfucker. I think he just put a gun in her side and said, don't make a word. Imagine imagine being so adrenaline rushed about almost fighting for a motel. And then like like a caveman, you see like a, a, a lady and be like, you with me now. And it's like, that's what it seemed like. Yeah. He like grabbed her and like shuffled her away with the dog. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? This guy that just flew in, just kidnapped this lady. Anyhow, we go up to our room. And I'm like, wow, that's fucking crazy. I go back down. They're not there anymore. I don't know what happened with this story. There's no ending to the story. It's still a mystery. But I saw the couple a couple days later at breakfast. Oh, they were a couple? Yeah, they were a couple. Oh, well. At the time, it didn't seem like that. It just seemed like he caveman. You, here. He didn't kidnap her. He did not kidnap her. All right. So then, right? Call the Amber Alert. It's day one. It's day one, (laughs) right? It's time to go get the fucking ATVs, get the trailer, and go up and ride in the mountains. It's time to do what we've come here to fucking do. But now, from day one, when we play Monopoly, first off, all these kids trying to play Monopoly down in the conference room, uh, they're just like, Fat Chris is just like eating fucking junk food and throwing the wrappers on the ground, and it's just a mess, right? So I walk in there, and I'm like, holy fuck, this place is destroyed, and there's like a convention thing the next day. So... To cover up our uh, our trail, I cleaned it up. Good job, Blade. So this is day one. We're on our way to the place. It's 9 o'clock in the morning. All right. Mm-hmm. We're on our way to the place to pick up the trailer and the two ATVs. Because we needed three ATVs because they only fit two people, these Polaris Razors. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's six of us. So we need actually to get three of them. So we go to the place. All right. And on the way there... Chris drops a bombshell. He goes, I'm not putting my card down on these ATVs. And we're like, what? Wait, we're, wait, what? We're like, what? That's the whole reason why we came to Denver is to yeah. go ATV in. <laughs> now, let me explain this to you. I don't have a credit card. All right. I have a debit card. I don't fuck with credit. I've never like had a credit card ever. Like I don't, I don't deal with credit. Right. I buy everything cash. Always have, always will. All right. Blade, he doesn't have a credit card. All right. I mean, I have a credit card, but it's also my debit card. So it's not like anything. Well, that's the same thing same, with mine. Yeah. Mine's like a credit card, debit card. Yeah. Now, in order to rent these ATVs, you can't use a debit credit card. You have to use a fucking credit card. All right. Because if anything were to happen, they'd be, be able to charge to it. Now, you got to remember, Alex is from England, so he doesn't have a card that he can put down on this. All right. Robert isn't old enough, so he doesn't have a card he can put down this. Dylan's not old enough. Dylan's not old enough. Chris is the only person that's old enough that has a freaking credit card that he can put down on this. Chris says he's not going to do it. So this turns into a giant freaking fight, right? Mm-hmm. To the point that we get there and they're still debating over this and the people are like, uh, what's going on? Are you running For, these or not? Okay, first off, what you have to... A lot of people are like, well, f- you guys got a free trip to Denver got ATV and you don't understand... When we were in the Target gathering clothes or whatever for this, going in public with these kids, it's like you're their parent and you raise the worst kid ever. Like they would just knock shit off shelves. And for, and another thing, whatever reason, they love the word fuck. 
Okay. We'll be sitting like in line at Target, like getting like gloves and shit that we need for ATVing. And there'll be like a family with like little kids. And they'll be like, ha ha, fuck, fuck, fuck. Oh, yeah. what the fuck? Fuck this. We're like, uh, you're swearing right next to a kid. He's like, oops, sorry. Fuck, oh, seriously, fuck. it's like Robert bumping into uh, Fat Chris be like, you fat, miserable fuck. Like, like, you know, pronounce it and be hella loud. I want you to fucking die of AIDS right now. Yeah. Like, this is how these kids fucking talk like nonstop, right? In public is so embarrassing to be with these little rich cunts. Yeah. Horrible. Horrible. So when we get to the rental place and literally for an hour, they're arguing in front of the dudes. They're like, you just want to rent this thing or what, dude? Like, and it'd be a situation like, okay, I need that card so I can run it to put on there. And then they argue for a fucking half an hour. Oh, Chris, Chris is like, uh, one minute, I'm going to fucking call my fucking bank. Like, <laughs> fuck this. Like, what the fuck? Like, so, it really changed my whole perspective on saying the word fuck. Like, I don't want to say it anymore now. This bullshit happens for about an hour before we can even get the ATVs. All right. At this point, the AT- ATV place, like parks these fucking things up on the trailer that's hooked up to the Yukon sideways instead of like long way so we can drive on and off sideways with like a portable ramp to give me and they're like well they're not going to fit any other way I'm like motherfucker so anyhow oh and also during this whole time this is when Dylan started all Dylan would say the whole trip he'd be like uh what is it hello Kimin and, uh, no, he'd be like, Kim Star trolled you. Kim Star <laughs> trolled you. Over and over again. And then they'd be like, Blade! Blade! Blade. Like, say, like some Igor shit. And, and they're just, just like, saying it over and over again to the point where I'm just like, multiple times, they had to stop the car and punch one of them. All right? And I'm like, stop, or I'm going to pull over and hit you again. I think you actually did. I think at one point you stopped the car, got out, opened up the passenger door, and like, just started sh- And shook. No, I think you shook uh, Fat Chris. Like, you, you don't want me to kill you. Like, you were fucking pissed. Dude, these motherfuckers drove me insane. Anyhow, long story short, fucking Chris finally puts down his fucking credit card, mm. and we get the two ATVs. All right? So ATVs are up in the trailer, and I'm driving out. Now, I got a fucking Yukon XL, which is a super long fucking car. It's like as long as a Cadillac. Now, I got a 50-foot fucking trailer hooked up to it with two ATVs. Every time I want to stop, I got to predict to stop like a good 30 feet before I'm actually yeah. stopping because it just pushes me with these ATVs. Now we got to go to another place to get a third ATV because this place only had two to rent. So we go to the third place, right? Chris fucking is paying for this. This is his ATV. This is like the special razor souped up one, yeah, right? It was more powerful. I got to do all this bullshit where I have to move all the ATVs off the trailer again because the way the first place put them up, they didn't fit. So to get his up and then I'm fucking strapping everything. It starts raining. Now, I'm the only one putting this on while these rich fucks are in the car like, (laughs) Blade, Keith, I told you, (laughs) Chris, you're fat. You're going to die of AIDS. Fuck you, (laughs) Dylan. You're gay. (laughs) Fucking fuck you, British kid. You're from England. Like, fuck you, Robert. You're a fucking peasant. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, they love saying the word peasant. That's all these fucking faggots say all day long. Now, they're in the car doing that. It's raining and I'm trying to get these fucking things on, right? I finally get them on. And I start heading up to the mountain, right? Out of all this frustration that I have, I'm super excited because now I'm about to have pleasure. I'm about to fucking ride these ATVs. It quits raining. I'm on the fucking highway. And then I hear these dreadful fucking words. Hey, Keem, we need to stop at McDonald's. Okay. Time out. One thing I do not understand is Dylan and all these guys talk about uh, peasant shit. Like if you do anything like a working man would, f- f- you're a loser. You're a peasant, right? They only want to they want to only want to eat food in the nicest places, this and that. But for some reason, they got a fucking McDonald's kick. Yeah, they love going to McDonald's. So I try to explain to them. I'm like, I'm on the highway. I have to pull off the highway with this 50 foot trailer and drive through a fucking drive through or even into a McDonald's parking lot. That's not going to work. Yeah. Like, guys, that's not going to fucking work with this giant trailer. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. (laughs) So I'm like, fucking, I'm sick of hearing it. So I'm like, fuck it. I'm just going to pull into this McDonald's because we're going by one. 
Sure enough, I fucking pull into this goddamn thing. I'm like hitting cones and signs. I'm like, I had to park long ways and the fucking people are coming out. The McDonald's people are like, uh, can you move your trailer? Nobody can get through. I go, if I move this trailer, like I'm not going to be able to get through. Right. Right. right? <laughs> so these fucking kids run in to get their happy meal, whatever the fuck they want it. Right. They come out. I fucking, I'm going around the building, like really fucking wide turns. I finally get the fucking thing amazingly out and we're actually going up to this fucking mountain. We're going, we're climbing. Timing. We're almost to the spot where we can go ATV in. It's now noon with all the bullshit. Remember, we started at 9 a.m. <laughs> we fucking get there. I park it. All right. Now, everyone should be super excited that I am about to unstrap all these things. Right. Unstrap all the ATVs, drive them off the trailer, and we're about to go riding. As I fucking start pulling the straps, I look to my left and I look to my right and no one else is fucking unstrapping this thing. Now, let me let me let me explain this. In order to unstrap these ATVs, it's like a seatbelt. All you do is push the button, unhook it, and that's it. Give it some slack and then pull it out from whatever you strapped it to. No, you no one's helping me. So I fucking do all this shit. I drive all the ATVs down. I get them out and I go, okay, let's get geared up and let's go. As I'm gearing up, fucking Dylan gets into one of the ATVs starts pulling donuts so fast that he fucking rolls it. In the parking lot. In the parking lot. Now, this is the first time we've taken these things out at all, and we're still in the parking lot. We're not even on the trails yet. He fucking rolls it. <laughs> all right? So fucking everyone's laughing hysterically and picking on him because what a fucking idiot. Now, the company said anytime you roll it, it's a 75 charge, right? Yeah. He puts it on its side. We pick him up. We get him can, back can I, upright. Can we mention the thing as soon as we left from the second place that Chris was like, uh, uh, I'm scared if something's going to happen to it, they're going to charge my card. I'm going to cancel my card. Oh, we'll get to that. No, no. That's what he did like 20 minutes after the right of the second right. one. So as we get up there, right, Blade, or Dylan rolls it. All right. Then Robert gets in. He's like, I'll show you how it's done. He starts pulling donuts and he fucking puts it up on the side. And we haven't even left yet. And there's been two rolls. All right. <laughs> Then they try to switch ATVs with me and Del- with me and uh, Blade. Like, they want our ATV. I'm like, fuck no. You just rolled that one twice. You're driving that one. Yeah. What? Like, so anyhow, <laughs> we get all get in our ATVs. It's the first day of riding. We start taking off. And it is fucking great. Finally. Finally, we're on the trail. I got a huge smile. I'm high. I'm fucking loving life. Everything's great. It starts downpouring. Right. So it starts fucking raining, right? And it starts raining pretty bad to the point where when you're opening it out and you're opening the gas up and you're going like 55 miles an hour, like the rain is like fucking poking our eyeballs. Like yeah. it's hell. And these kids weren't fucking prepared. These kids had like sweatshirts and jeans on and shit. So we get back to the place and everyone's freezing, right? They're like, open up the thing. Like, you got to fucking turn on the heat, open up the car. Like, they get in there and the fucking British kid, like, had nothing on practically. And he's just freezing his balls off. And he's like, I want to go home. I want to stay. I didn't give a fuck. How yeah. what have we got? Anyhow, I go to Blade. I go, look, dude, I'm not fucking driving. I'm not driving this trail around and I'm not driving these ATVs around. I'm not fucking doing it. I told the kids, I'm like, it is nerve wracking driving the trailer guys. Like no joke. It's nerve wracking. It's not a piece of cake. And not only that, but we want to do stuff. We want to go to like out to eat. We want to go to David Buster's. There's things that we want to do. I'm not fucking driving a 50 foot trailer around with me to go do all this bullshit. right? Right. And everyone was ill prepared. So he guaranteed had to go back to target to get people like more clothes and stuff. I'm like, I'm not taking this fucking trailer off. So as it starts downpouring and these kids are nice and in the Yukon, nice and toasty with the heat up, right? Me and Blade are trying to figure out how to unhook this trailer. We could not get it off. I start cranking the fucking jack down on the trailer and the fucking bottom falls up because it's too fucking high. Like seriously, it was mission impossible. The jack did not work. There was nothing we could fucking do. The thing's broken on it. The handle's fucking broken. The pin's broken. Nothing's working. This fucking trailer is stuck on. So I'm like, fine. I'll just drive with the fucking trailer. Drive out the first night with a fucking trailer. Hurry up. By the time we get home, we're fucking exhausted, right? We fucking go to sleep. That's the first. You're saying fucking a lot. What? You're saying the word fucking a lot. Well, that's because I'm thinking of this fucking trip. Okay. I'm just saying. (laughs) I don't know why, but man, after this trip, I noticed that like 
You know what I mean? I notice that a fucking lot. Anyhow, we go to sleep the first night, right? We wake up in the morning, and now I just have this freaking trailer on, right? We stop at Target. Everyone gets more gear. They get glasses. They get everything they fucking need. All right, and we head back up to the trail, all right? As we're back up there, right, the sun is shining. It was a beautiful day. It it's really was. It's a beautiful day, second day of riding, right? And we hit the trails, and we hit them hard. And I remember Chris, Fat Chris, being like, let's just drive so far that we get lost. So that's exactly <laughs> what we do. We start going up on private roads. We're fucking- Pretty much any opportunity to go higher on the, on the mountain, we did. Any north material we took. Yep. So we get all the way to the top of this fucking mountain. 1,200, 12,000 feet? Yeah. 12,000 feet above sea level. We get all the way to the top of this fucking mountain. And once you go higher and higher up the mountain, the trails become basically (laughs) boulders to drive over. Yeah. The trails are just boulders. I can't hear you in the mic, so... I'm not talking in the mic right now. But anyhow... Uh, so you have to go like 10 miles an hour and the thing's shaking back and forth. And you're, you're at this point, you're not driving, you're climbing. All right. We get up to the top and these kids must've got bored of going so slow. So they start playing bumper cars with their fucking ATVs and they start crashing into each other. Well, fucking fat Chris takes his super up, souped up razor and fucking swings into Alex and Robert's car really fucking fast. Snaps the front axle. Didn't he pop his tire earlier? Uh, he popped, yeah, but we got fixed a flat and put it in. Oh, okay. So now we're on the top of the mountain. There's no trails even near us, right? And these fuckers have a broken ATV. So we're trying to figure out what to do. They ended up calling 911 rescue to get fucking shipped out of there. My original thought was we would go down, like we would take the two ATVs, take four people go down and then to the truck and then drop whoever off and then come back up and pick those other two up. But as far as getting the thing down, I have no idea. So we decide to stay on the trail that we're on, right? Robert seems to think he knows how to get out. He knows (laughs) how to get out. So we start driving and driving and driving to the point where we end up like on highways and stuff like on, on, excuse me, on like roads. Yeah. And we get all the way to this one part. Where we're you're not, not first off, you're not supposed to drive on the roads with ATVs. Yeah, you're supposed to drive on the trails, but not on the roads. And Robert pulls out directions. We're like, just get us to Central City. Pulls out directions. We're driving it for a good 10, 15 minutes, and then finally we come up on this thing, and it's like, well, what are you doing? It's like, well, we have to go on this on the freeway for like two miles. We're like, what? We can't go on the freeway. You can't pull an ATV on the freeway. He's like getting directions on his phones thinking that we can go on the highway. No, you can't. You can't drive <laughs> these things on the fucking highway. <laughs> so anyhow, we got to go all the way back to the point where we're fucking lost and we're on these trails forever. Yeah. Right. But I finally find my way back based on memory. And we get back to the ATVs or whatever. And then fucking... Uh, Chris and uh, Dylan the, that were stranded up on the mountain like uh, rescue picked him up and brought him back alright so we get up there and we're talking to him alright and Chris goes uh, we're like what are you going to do because like how are you going to return this rental ATV that's broken on top of the mountain Yeah. he goes I don't give a fuck I'm just going to cancel my card <laughs> yeah. he goes these guys already rolled I'm just going to cancel my card and we're like you can't just like rent an ATV and leave it up there. He goes, I don't yeah. give a fuck. It's not that diabolical scheme. They've probably dealt with this before. You're not like the the grand wizard of... You it's know, it's come on, basically dude. like fucking stealing, right? Yeah. So in the middle of this, I'm thinking to myself, I cannot take this fucking trailer. Like I'm not going back to the hotel with this trailer. Now, where we're riding on the mountain is a good 45 minutes drive away from the hotel. I'm like, I'm not taking this fucking trailer with me. There's so much shit I got to do. This is the day that I'm doing a fan meetup. I'm like, all you fuckers, you need to stand on the back of the trailer. Let's see if we can pop it. Sure enough, the fucking thing popped off. Freedom! (laughs) Right? It was awesome when it finally got off. I'm fucking off of this trailer. I can drive. It was like like being reborn. Imagine imagine having like a 50-pound weight on each ankle, and then you finally release it. Now you can just walk around. 
Now, the whole ride back to the hotel, they're like, oh, someone's going to steal the ATVs. You're going to get fucked, Chris. Chris, you're going to get fucked. Oh, Chris, you're going to get fucked. Chris like, I don't care. Like, I'm just going to fly early. <laughs> We're like, you can't do that. Yeah. I'm like, you're not even going to call the place? Like, you need to call the place. Let him know what's going on. And he's like, uh, no. He's like, I don't give a fuck. I'm just going to leave. I'm like, you're going to get charged. These are like $20,000 machines. Right. Like, anyhow, we get all the way back. Oh, and, is this the David Mustard night? Yeah. Okay. Now let me explain something. Okay. So the first night we went and got went to altitude, and the weed prices were horrendously high or whatever. And then the next day, what we did is we went to this place, the first dispensary in Colorado, in right? Central City. In Central City, right? Um, that's when we got the green crack. And then that's also when I went there the second time. What I did is I decided to buy some edibles, right? So I bought some cookies. Now, it's 100 milligrams total. It's 10 milligrams of cookie. 10 milligrams of weed of cookie. I don't know what that means, but that's just what it is, right? Now, on the trip back, I take one and I take two, and I'm like, I'm not really feeling it, but I'm fucking hungry. So I'm like in munchy mode, but not high. I eat all 10 of them, okay? <laughs> Actually, no, I ate nine of them because I gave, one to, I gave one to someone else, okay? But like I'm – so on the trip back, about an hour into it or whatever, like once we get to the hotel, I'm fucking – way too high like way too fucking high to the point where like uh, I'm like Keem you gotta stop and get like I gotta get a coffee before we go to this thing like we were already running late but I'm like I have to get a coffee dude so I walk in there and I literally stare at the coffee thing for like five minutes like not knowing what to do it was like paralyzing like how high I was so anyhow we're fucking on our way to Dave and Buster's right yep now in my local town there's a Dave and Buster's and pretty much me and John taught Blade how to pretty much rape David Busters. Like, yeah. there's a game that you can exploit and get tons of fucking tickets from. Uh, you're not really cheating. What you're doing is just it's a skilled game. All right. Once you learn, imagine the skill. imagine a, ru- a huge roulette wheel. Each little slot, like a like Wheel of Fortune or whatever, there's like a hole, and you drop a ball from above. And you try to drop the ball from above into the holes that are spinning around. Yeah. All right. So sometimes it goes straight in. A lot of times it just bounces around and falls and eventually falls in one of the holes. We now, always go for jackpots. Oh, there's a jackpot that's 250 tickets every mm-hmm. time you hit it. All right. Now, what I learned from my local Dave and Busters is if you keep on hitting the guard on the jackpot, because there's like a guard to make sure it doesn't roll into the jackpot. Yeah. Like you have to hit it dead center. It's pretty hard. If you hit the corner of it, you can knock the screw loose, right? And the guard will actually fall off. And then the jackpot hole is bigger than it normally would be. Yeah. Right? So the first thing I do is try to knock that guard off and I do it. All right. Then it's just jackpot after jackpot after jackpot. Now, as he's doing this, first off, I'm high as shit, so I'm not contributing at all. I'm just watching, right? As he do as he does this, the machine runs out of tickets. So he calls over, has the thing filled. Now, again, this is a fan meetup, so we have fans there, and then we just have random people that don't know who we are, and every, there's a huge crowd around the machine mm-hmm. as I'm just banking jack Because at, when people go to Dave & Buster's, a lot of time you'll see people with like that little cup, and it fills up with maybe 200 tickets or whatever. Yeah, that's not shit. We have a fucking huge pile next to our shit. Yeah, our, our pile was huge, right? Mm-hmm. So we got a crowd of people watching, right? And, and Keem's hitting, at one point he hit nine in a row. Yeah. We counted. You hit nine jackpots in a row, dude. So I end up uh, sending the kid out to like get me a, uh, a pop or whatever. And I send another kid out to get me um, a, a guy to refill the tickets, right? Mm-hmm. So guy comes. He fucking refills the tickets. All right. And we're back to work. Yeah. All of a sudden. That's right, the second fill up of the tickets. That's so he the went, He went through a whole roll of tickets. Twice. Twice. Yes. So we're there. And well, there are actually multiple rolls multiple rows because uh, it comes out two different ways but anyhow the guy comes back again all right and he's like um yeah this machine is broken all right <laughs> so you can't use it anymore so the crowd's like oh you know he walks up in the middle of keem hitting jackpot after jackpot after jackpot right he walks up 
nudges himself between the machine and Keem and puts this little piece of paper that says machine out of order over the swipe card thing, right? And everyone in the crowd's like, what? That's lame. What are you talking about? What? Keem looks at him with his face like, are you fucking crazy? Rips the thing off and throws it on the ground and keeps playing. And the first one he did hit a jackpot. That was the yeah. best fucking part ever, dude. <laughs> you got to think, I'm high and I'm watching this. He's like, get the fuck out of here. Rips it off and he just goes, keeps on going. So I'm like, okay, well, we're eventually going to get shut down and here. And the crowd, the crowd is just like, yeah. <laughs> Oh, it, like, yeah. like <laughs> fuck, fuck the man. You know he's not shutting down this machine. So I'm, I'm there. I'm hitting jackpot and jackpot again. Like, and I'm doing it as fast as I possibly can. It's to the point where the machine like cannot keep up. Like it's, it's backtracked about. I don't know, anywhere between three and 10,000 tickets. It's backtracked. So we would just have to sit there and wait. Like, just let's let say it keep if, on spitting it out. Yeah, and we'd have to wait about 45 minutes for the tickets to stop spitting out because it's <laughs> backtracked so much. Now, right? before we get into this, okay, they run David Bessler's like it's a casino, okay? Uh, and one rule that they have that I know from, from like playing in casinos is like they actually, they if you're winning, if you're really just killing it, they are going to assume, A, either you're cheating or... Or you're good, but we want we don't want to say that you're good, so they're just going to shut it down. Like if I'm killing a blackjack, they can just shut the blackjack table down. Now the first guy that comes up that tried to put the out of order thing, he's wearing like a polo, right? He's wearing like the official like Dave and Buster's thing, right? Yeah. The second guy that starts rolling up as I'm hitting jackpots has got a tie on. This is a manager, all right? He comes up to me and he goes, "Look, I know you're getting free plays. Don't freaking lie to me. We checked back with the computer." You're not paying for this machine. We're shutting it down. I fucking lose it. Yeah. I go, what? I go, are you accusing me of stealing? Is that what you're saying? I go, go hit the button right now. See if you can drop balls. He drops. He starts dropping out balls. But I had credits on the machine. Yep. Once the credits run out, he's hitting the button and no other balls are coming out. And I go, now watch this, motherfucker. I go, you see my card here? I'm going to swipe it. And look, now balls are coming out again. Don't fucking say that I'm fucking cheating. Right. They were literally trying to shut me down because I was pulling so many fucking tickets. He fucking goes, he goes, he goes, listen, I'm not going to apologize to you. I go, but I just proved to you that you were lying. And he goes and he unplugs the machine. <laughs> so I'm livid. I want to hit this motherfucker. I'm so pissed. Yeah. Right, so I grab my pile of tickets, dude, and it's like it, it's the Hell point where uh, the, the fanboys have to help me out, right? Yeah. <laughs> I take them up to the fucking spot to put in the tickets, right? And they're fucking adding them up, right? And I start telling the lady, I'm like, "Yeah, this guy shut it down." He goes, "Well, you can just go talk to a, a manager that's much higher than him and tell him what happened, right?" Yep. As we're doing that, like it's taking forever them for to weigh all these tickets because they had to do like multiple, multiple baskets, right? She's like, uh, yeah, you have 30,000 tickets. So I turn around, and that, at this point, that's like enough to get like an iPad for free, right? Yeah. Or not an iPad, but a, what is it? A, like an iPod or something. An iPod, right? Like one of the decent iPods. So I turn around and I go, 30,000 tickets. And at this point, I didn't realize that we were there that long. There's a line that's like circling around the Dave and Busters, <laughs> like four people thick. Yeah. Right? And they're all just like, fuck you. Now get out of the way so we could like. <laughs> yeah. Because he turned around thinking it was like a victory. Like, oh, my people are here. Thank you. 30,000. They're like, that's fucking great. Get your ass out of the line, dude. Yeah. We were... just listened to you, bitch, and complained to this lady for like 15 minutes. Like, stop. Well, they had to wait that long because it took them so many long. tickets. Yeah. There's so many tickets. So anyhow, get out of the line. Like, I actually like try to calm myself down because I'm pissed off because when he unplugged the machine. You got to remember, there was anywhere between three and 10,000 tickets that was owed that didn't pay out yet. Yeah. So they literally fucked me over. All right. So I calmed down a little bit and then we go and talk to like the district manager or whatever. Well, like that, that that's the it. highest person, yeah. the highest person that's there. And he goes, according to our machine, you're getting free plays. And I start fucking just arguing with this dude to the point where he went to go talk to the fucking security cop. Right. And as he's talking him, I'm following him, and he notices that I'm there, and he didn't feel like telling the security cop anymore, and he changed his tune, and he's like, we'll go check the computers. So they take all three cards, they come out with some sheets, and they just, you know, backed up their same bullshit. They're like, yeah, it was given free plays. It shows right here on the computer, but it wasn't. I proved to you that it wasn't. Big argument, whatever. We leave Dave and Buster's. We say hi to the fans. We sign some shit. We take pictures with some fans. We leave. <laughs> 
we get back to the hotel, all right, and there becomes this situation at the hotel that's fucking crazy, all right. Actually, that's the next night. That's the next night. That's the next that's night. That's the next night, yep. All right. After this, we go to IHOP, all right? We go to IHOP after Dave and Buster's. And for some fucking reason, Dylan just didn't pay the bill. Yep. He just skipped out on the bill. And he had enough money to pay for it. I don't know why he fucking skipped out of the bill. But whatever. Okay, I was still so high that I was too high to read. So I didn't order anything until everyone else ordered something. Like, everyone's ordering all this food. I'm like, oh, I'll get a water. Because I was too high to fucking even look at the menu. Ten, and ha- ten cookies deep. Fuck that. Never again. We go back to the hotel after IHOP and we go to sleep. All right. Now, remember, there's only one... One of the ATVs is fucked up. So there's only two ATVs left. The next morning, I go, I'm not picking up these ATVs because you canceled your card. Because the next morning was Sunday. And I knew that I had to return these ATVs. And I just told them, I'm like, I'm not returning these ATVs because you canceled your credit card. And when I return them, the company's going to be like, "Uh, yeah, you canceled your credit card. We're trying to charge you for all this damage. Right. Because you got to understand, the other ATVs that are still fine, you got to remember, one of them rolled twice. So it's fucked up a little bit. But it's Chris, still drivable. Chris wanted us to deliver him back without him there. Like, he's just like, you just do it. Yeah, he didn't want to be there because his card was in the line. I'm like, fuck that. I go, you have to pay me like $300 if you want me to deal with this bullshit. So they pay me the $300. I'm like, fine. I'll go get him. All right. Yeah. Now at this point, Robert's staying back in the hotel because he doesn't feel well or something. Didn't Rob, okay? We didn't even mention this that Robert had like had either gotten his braces off or on or some shit like that. Or just some, on. Just on. So he was he can eat food. So this whole trip, he's like, like he can't eat food and, and the high elevation and all the fucking shit. Right. So anyhow, um, we go. All right, and they gave me the $300, and we go the third day to pick up these ATVs. Again, there's only two of them left, all right? So only four people can drive. So we agreed that Chris would be a passenger, all right? They paid Blade 50 bucks not to go to just wait at his car, and Blade's like, fine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fuck it. I don't, I don't want to go back. I didn't <laughs> all go. I did was, like, I rolled up some weed and just chilled. <laughs> so we get, to the, we get to the spot where the ATVs are, right? And Chris just jumps, and one of the cars is the driver. When we already talked about this, that he was going to be a passenger. And the British kid's like, I'm not going to ride with him, right? So me and Dylan were just going to ride in the other one. Because yeah. here's the thing. Me and Dylan have known each other forever, all right? Like, I've been friends with this kid for forever. Since he's been like 12, he worked for me. Um, and Dylan and me just wanted to ride together, all right? Well, Chris was trying to fuck it up. Or with the British kid because yeah. the British kid didn't want to ride with Chris. So there's this huge debate. Finally, I just start punching Chris. I'm just like punching him over and over again. He finally gets out and goes into the passenger seat and the British kid drives him and I go with Dylan. Now, we told you, Blade, that we were only going to be gone for an hour, but uh, we were gone for much longer. Yeah, about two hours. We started hitting the fucking trails hard and it's a great day. It's a great day. And we're up in the mountains. We're, we're going all over the fucking place. I'm pulling donuts. And I'm just, I'm on these trails at this point that I know because I've rode them four times now, you know, back in uh, a couple months ago when there was snow on the trail. Right. And then a couple times, you know, this trip, right? So I know these trails pretty well. I know everything to expect. So it's a 10 mile per hour trail in the woods and I'm going 50. <laughs> I'm just flying. I don't give a He's fuck. He's showing me video that Dylan held where he was like going 50 fast as fuck. Like just the trees are whizzing by on this small trail, right? right. And there's boulders that you're like, I'm, I'm fucking driving like S's, like back and forth, like dodging shit. <laughs> I'm going fast as fuck. All right. Well, the British kid's driving, Alex, and fat Chris, and they're an ATV behind me and Dylan, and they're trying to keep up. We're on our way back. Again, I'm going 50 on a little trail in between the woods. Apparently, we just lose him. All right? We can't find him. Like, I drive all the way back. I'm like, what's up, Blade? Blade's high as fuck. <laughs> Blade's, like, up in the clouds high. He's like, I'm fine. I'm like, yeah, I'm, great. I was lovely. Because I went there apologizing. I'm like, sorry, it took so long. He's like, why? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> so we get there, right? And fucking all of a sudden, like, Dylan takes my fucking ATV and just leaves, right? So now me and D- Blade are just stuck there. I'm like, what the fuck? Where'd he go? Yeah. I'm calling him on his phone. He ain't answering. 
all of a sudden these fucking guys come flying in with this souped up razor, like a really fucking nice one. Yeah. And uh, they go, yeah, are you looking for your friends over there? I'm oh, like, those dudes wanted to be buddy buddy, man. Yeah, they were like, oh, yeah, man, uh, you got you got two friends with red razors. I go, yeah. And I go, are, did they get an accident or something? And he goes, well, the one's pretty fucked up. And roll cage all dented in the shit, man. The fucking black wheel's not working right. Is that your guys' razor? I'm like, no, we rented it. Oh. And he goes, he goes, but the other one seems to be fine. They're going about 10 miles an hour down the trail. They should be here in like about 15 minutes. They, so, first off, like Keem was like standing on the on the trailer itself, and they just hopped on up there like, "Hey, buddy, how you doing?" <laughs> <laughs> so, fifteen minutes roll by, and we see Dylan come first, and, and he's in my ATV. That's fine, and I'm like, Dylan, what the fuck happened? <laughs> and he goes, "Dude, they crashed. It's bad." So we're waiting and waiting and waiting, and sure enough, they come in. And the fucking back tire is like wobbling back and forth to the point where it looks like it's fallen off. The roll cage is all dented in. Yeah, now the yeah. British kid's driving and fat Chris is in pasture and they get out and I notice blood all over Chris's knee. And there's blood all over the British kid's knee <laughs> or arms and shit. And I'm like, what the fuck happened? Yeah. And the British kid's like, well, you know how you were driving down the trail like 50 miles an hour or whatever? <laughs> well, we were trying to keep up with you, and I took the same line that you took, and all of a sudden, we went airborne, and we, like, flipped it four times. We almost died. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, holy fuck, is it that serious? What the fuck happened? <laughs> like, what? Really? And, of course, it's true. They fucking rolled. They rolled four fucking times and landed on their side. Now, you got to understand, before we even took off, this British kit went on a huge rant and held us up 30 minutes before we took off this fourth, this third day, saying that he didn't want to drive with Chris because Chris was dangerous. Mm-hmm. And this kid rolled it four <laughs> times. <laughs> they're fucking lucky. They could have died, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they're bleeding all over the place or whatever. So we get back, right? And I drive this fucking wobbly thing up on the trailer. And I drive the other one up on the trailer, which was mine, which was fine, right? I'm fucking going through all this bullshit, strapping them up. And now I got to go through the bullshit of returning these when Chris canceled his credit card. Now, you got to understand, Chris's credit card is on all three of these. The one that he left up in the mountain, the one that just rolled fucking four times, roll cage dented in, back tire all fucked up, and mine. Mm Mm-hmm. Thank God it was Sunday because the place was closed. Yep. So we fucking went there. We fucking unloaded them. Uh, We got the shit off and I fucking got the trailer off and we're out. Freedom. We returned it with no bullshit. Right. I mean, except for the one of them was fucked up. That's not our fault. Like that's their fault. Yeah. So that's like British and Chris fault. As I'm taking these off, I take mine off first and I know something's wrong with mine. The transmission goes out. All right. I'm like, what the fuck? Right. So now you got to understand every single one of these ATVs got fucked. All right. We take off. We leave. We go back to the hotel. All right. And the main thing is, is we didn't eat this day. So we're starving. So we decide to go to eat, but Dylan wants to go back to Dave and Buster's like hella bad. He's like, let's just go to Dave and Buster's. Let's, I want to see you rape him again. All right. Okay. As we're heading out, Dylan goes to me. He goes, Keem, you know how you put down the room for Roberts? I go, yeah. He goes, go down, show me your ID, get another room key for Roberts. I want to pull a prank. I'm like, I'm not doing that. Like, I don't trust you. Yeah. He's like, just do it. Just do it. I go, give me $60. <laughs> so he gives me $60. I'm like, fuck it. If he's going to pull a prank, he's going to pull a prank, right? So I get a fucking room key for Roberts' room, and I give it to Dylan. All right? So... We're fucking at Dave and Buster's, all right? I'm fucking hitting jackpots again, like hurried up and grabbed a quick uh, like 6,000 tickets or whatever. Um, and Dylan's disappeared. Like he's not there. All right, I'm like, where the Oh, f- Dylan tried to Dyna Dash again. What, at the Dave and Buster's? At the Dave and Buster's. <laughs> so Dylan was like, oh, I'll get your next meal because I gave him some, you know, gave him like a weed cookie or whatever. And so I'm like, okay, Dylan's going to take care of me. Perfect. I even I was like this. Like I figured it was like ten bucks, and my stuff was like you know eleven plus t- 
you know, tip. And I'm like, uh, Dylan, did you pay? He's like, yep, paid. I'm like, all right, here's like four bucks to cover tip and stuff. He's like, all right, thanks. Gets up. They all start walking away. The whole group starts walking away, right? And the lady that served us is like, uh, yeah, here's your, here's the check for like everybody. I'm like, uh, you little rich fucks, come back. Like, get the, get back over here now. And they're like, what? And they're like, you guys need to pay your bill. Like, what the fuck? Dylan, like, Dylan, I don't know why Dylan thought, like, Dining Dashing was, like, the cool thing to do. And I'm like, dude, you can't fucking do that. He was doing it everywhere. So, anyhow. And then Dylan disappears. Dylan's gone. I'm at the Dave and Buster's. Dylan's not there. I'm like, what the fuck? Where is this kid, right? All of a sudden, I text him. I say, if you're back at the hotel, we're on our way back now. And I get a text back saying, no, wait, hold him up longer. And that's when I cl- it clicks in my brain. Dylan took an Uber back to the hotel from Dave and Buster's to break into Robert's room. Mm-hmm. So I start stalling everyone, you know, because he did pay me 60 bucks. I start stalling everyone. I'm like, uh, yeah, we need to go to the store. We need to go do this. We need to do this. We need to do that. Right? I even chipped in and said, I told blade the truth of what was going on. Right. The prank was being held. All right. So, so to my it, contribution to it was, uh, I told them that I left my card at Dave and Buster's like my credit card. And so we drove back to Dave and Buster's to get it, and that gave us another half hour. So I'm expecting that Dylan's, like, in Robert's room, and he's, like, shaving, creaming everything, and, like, just doing some crazy fucking shit, right? Well, it gets to a point where Dylan keeps making me stall him longer and longer, where I'm getting frustrated, and I'm like, I don't give a fuck anymore. Like, the $60 isn't worth it. Like, I want to go back to my room. Yeah. Right? So all of a sudden, I'm like, uh, yeah. Uh, why are, do you have me stalling them for so long? Aren't you done with this prank by now? Because Dylan's like been there for like an hour, right? And he's like, no. I go, well, what are you doing? Explain to me what you're doing. He goes, well, I'm putting a rat on Robert's computer. And I'm like, what? He's installing a rat on Robert's computer. And I'm like, why? What is exactly a rat? A rat is like hacking software to like grab all the passwords and like grab everything. So I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Now, apparently, these guys just came back from a London trip, and apparently, Robert took a bunch of pictures of Dylan that were, like, embarrassing or something, and Dylan was, like, hacking his computer to try to get it back. And I'm like, I want no part of this. Yeah, it's too too deep, too deep. I want no part of this, Dylan. Like, I'm bringing them back. I'm telling Robert I want no part of it. And Dylan's like, fuck it. He's like, I'll just give you, like, $1,000. Just don't say a word. (laughs) Now, I'm thinking to myself, like, Dude, don't take the money. This is so fucked up. But at the same time, all these faggots were annoying me. And this right. trip was just miserable. Blay! Keemstar told you over and over again. Just I'm so frustrated. To if there's any way I can somewhat profit from my misery, I'm gonna take it. Right. <laughs> so I agree to it. I'm like, fine, I don't give a fuck. I want nothing to do with this. I'm not into it, right? Yeah. So I stall them, stall them. We finally come back to the hotel, right? And I'm like, Dylan, uh, fucking send me the money. And he's like, oh, I'm, I'm not going to do it until the morning or whatever. Give me some bullshit like that. And I'm like, what the fuck is going down? So me and Blade were like, let's go smoke again. So we're out in the front. All right. Mm-hmm. We're in front of the hotel. All right. And the kids come down in the front of the hotel as well. And what they notice in the parking lot, and it's late. It's like 2 o'clock in the morning. What these kids notice in the parking lot is that there's two pizzas on top of a car that somebody left. So they go and they get the pizzas and they're looking at them. They're like, oh, my God, we found free pizzas. I'm like, dude, they've been sitting in that car forever. So they set them on top of a garbage can, right? Me and Blade are smoking. These four fucking rich kids are out front. Dylan decides that he's going to fucking grab a piece of pizza and throw it at the British kid. All right. And they're all laughing and stuff. They're like, ha ha, like throwing pizza back and forth at each other. It's not a big deal, right? Dylan goes and runs in the hotel so nobody can hit him with a pizza. Everything's fine, right? We start talking, we're chatting, we're in front of it. And all of a sudden, I see Dylan grab a whole pizza of this old pizza. And like, this was thick pizza with like an inch of sauce. Like, this was not like yeah. just flimsy pizza this was really thick saucy pizza right he takes the whole fucking thing and throws it on the top of british's head and then british like fucking like grabs a piece of pizza and fires it back at him and it hits the hotel front window right yeah the entrance to the hotel the sliding glass door is just sauced up now we're high as fuck right 
And this black lady working at the hotel desk comes running out. She's like, "Uh uh-uh, no, no. I'm calling the fucking police. So I go into this mode like, "Uh, no, you're not. I go in there. I'm like, listen, they're fucking kids. Uh, If you have, like, some clean supplies, I will take care of it right now. No need to get the police involved. And, like, she had her hand on the phone. Yeah. And she was like, if if it's all clean, I'll come out there in two minutes. If it's all clean, everything's good. I'm like, thank you. So Blade saves Dylan from going to jail. All right. Then the next thing that happens, right? I go to Dylan. I'm like, uh, Blade just saved you, and you didn't PayPal me the money you owe me. You better PayPal now. He goes, I'll do it in the morning. I'm like, I'm not falling for this shit because what these kids do is they always like send each other money and then they charge back just to see that what they can get away with yeah right like it's so oh fucking one of the days uh the hotel parking lot was being like repaved so there was these yellow do not enter signs and keem's like uh yeah like they're like keem you should drive through that it'd be hilarious and he's like uh yeah 40 bucks and they're like, I got 20, I got 20, okay, do it. Will you do it for 40? He's like, yeah. <laughs> so he I- fucking does it, <laughs> la- laughing like hyenas. And then, and then they- they're just like, oh, we're not paying. What? Like, yeah. That's ridiculous. These cunts. Like, their word doesn't mean shit. Their word doesn't mean shit. And Dylan never sends the payment. He goes, oh, I'll do it in the morning. I'm like, fuck it. I go, first of all, like, I'm assistant in a fucking, I assistant Dylan in a fucking crime. Like, that's a legit crime. Yeah. Right? I go, this dude's not even going to pay me. Like, I'm not a part of this anymore. Right. So I call up Robert and I tell him, all right, what happens? Right. What happened? And that his computer's hacked. Yeah. All out fucking war. Yep. Robert starts freaking the fuck out and he starts calling the police and everything. So then we stop him from calling the police and we're like, just calm down. Like. Erase your computer, get a new computer, whatever. He's swearing at Dylan. They're fighting back and forth. Like it's it it's it's just hell at this point, right? I uh, Robert finally calms down. He doesn't call the police, but like he's gathering all the information that he can that Dylan like has done this to his computer. Dylan's freaking out and he's like trying to bribe everybody to like fucking protect him or whatever. <laughs> all right, um, so. We go to sleep that night, all right? And we're like, what the fuck happened last night? I can't believe that bullshit. And this is the day that we're going to fucking go home. Now, what these idiots do, right, is they schedule all their flights to go out at 1, and they schedule me and Blades to go out at 7 7 p.m. So we're like, motherfucker, all right? And when I return the AT, or when I return the Yukon, all right, it's got to have full gas in it. You can't return a rental without full gas, all right? And these guys are supposed to pay for gas. So I'm going to them like, all right, who's paying for gas? Like, I need, like, at least $100 to fill it up, right? Yeah. They're like, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll pay you. We'll pay you when we go, right? Now, I have to fl- give everyone a ride to the fucking airport. What these three fucking idiots, Robert, or excuse me, not Robert, uh, Dylan, Chris, and the British kid do, right? They end up paying for an Uber to give them a ride to the airport and we were leaving at the same time. So the money that they spent on the Uber, they could have just gave to me for fucking gas. Yeah. So we end up having to take just me and Robert over and he pays for like a little bit of the gas, like 50 bucks or whatever. So now the gas is like coming out of my own pocket, right? We return the thing and me and Blade are happy as fuck that we're out of here, that we're away from these fucking little rich cunts and that we're fucking leaving and we're gone for good, right? All of a sudden, my phone rings, and Dylan's like, uh, yeah, I bought you a flight that leaves early, like, at 3. Oh, yeah, I forgot about this part. And we're super excited. We're like, yes, we're leaving early, right? Well, then he calls back, texts later, like, he says, I'm just trolling. And now we almost return the rental car early. Yep. So I'm like, what the fuck? Anyhow, we get these fucking kids out of here. We're away from these. We're about to be home. We're going to be home at 1.30 in the morning. Our flight leaves at 7 p.m. We're super excited to get home. We fucking get to our airport and we get our tickets and they tell us that our layover in Chicago, that we're going to miss our flight because there's a weather delay and we're going to have to spend the night in Chicago. So we're like, fuck this. Let's just get drunk. Let's drink. So we're like drinking, waiting for this flight. And, you know, by miracle, we ended up making our flight somehow and we got home at one thirty, and that was the fucking... We got home at 3. Or 3 in the morning, but that was the fucking trip. That was the trip. Very thorough. I'm glad that we fucking timed it out like that. It's beautiful. That was the trip. And this is the cast. I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoy the back of cast, make sure you share it. If you think there should be uh You know that was one take? Yeah. That was pretty fucking... That was one take Charlie, man. 
If you think no. there should be more trips, uh, make sure you let us know about it. See you guys. Peace.